Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Starting Tomato 16. So in the previous episode, we started the iOS View Controller Concrete Factory. And we have two tests. We also showed how to not have these tests in isolation and have them in a more integration style. We decided to have isolation so we can have different platforms without complicating our test setup, but it's up to you. It's both valid. Next, let's have a look what we have so far. And what I don't like here is this bang. Let's add a test for that. So I want to start, let's say, without options. Create, well, okay, it's an empty controller. It's not going to crash. It's just going to return a, a UI view controller. No, it's going to return a question view controller, okay. but with no options. Okay. If I create with an empty dictionary here, like this, and I try to create a question view controller for a question Q1, I expect this to be empty. And I want to have empty as well. It's a no op. Why should we crash? I prefer a cross there, to be honest. Right, because we don't want this to happen yeah. at all. But the problem is that we will have a runtime crash. It's not easy to see. Maybe this setup happens because of a service. It's not working properly. But you also, if you go to a question with empty options, you're going to be stuck. <laughs> right. We could also make this factory return as an optional. And then we return nil. Okay, instead of raising yeah. an exception there. If we follow TDD, when we have our services, we have our contracts that guarantees that this is never empty. So I think it's fine to crash. But if it crashes, I want it to crash with my message. Exactly. Right? I don't want it crashing with this bang. Mm -hmm. So what we can do is we can have a guard. Yep. Guard let options equals this self dot options question. Else we crash and we send a message. Right. So we want a fatal error and we want to pass a message. Yes. And we can say couldn't find options for question. Run the test. Okay. So we can't easily test like fatal error here. You can use some clever swizzling of this function. I've seen some approaches to this. But then you have to import a lot of libraries or write your own. It's quite a lot of code and it's quite messy. We could change this interface to return an error type or an optional view controller and then complicate the use of it. And this is a case that someone didn't respect our contract. So if we're following TDD like this, I wouldn't be so concerned about it. We could avoid that by making this protocol throw. Mm -hmm. But then we start passing implementation details up the chain to our interface. Because of the implementation, we would have to add knowledge of what can go wrong in the interface. And that's the high level policy here, right? Okay, let's continue. We might have to come back and get rid of this, but I'm happy with that. Okay, so we are testing for single answers. Let's put this name in here. So we have a missing test. Yes. Let's say we want this to be table view. With single selection and we import UI kit. And here I can use allows. It's a controller, it's not an SUT. True, that's the controller. Allows multiple selection should be. Should be false. False. And I think we need to load the view. Can load the view here. In the test. That's what happens if you don't want to switch inside the view controller, right? Yeah. So maybe we should change that. Maybe the view controller should know this now. So, okay, now we have all the tests. It's passing. We didn't see a failing test because that's the default. So before we have the multiple, we can have a make SUT function. Yeah, makes sense. Make SUT and it returns. Please don't forget the mark helpers. <laughs> we like to separate the I do. functions from the tests. Yeah, that's a good idea. It really bothers me if I don't see that. <laughs> okay, that's it. I think so, so now we can just do this, make SUT. 
oh, we need the question there. Well, we can have it in the class scope, right, as a property, if it's being used everywhere. Yes, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we can replace it here. And we can have our options here. We run the test. Mm -hmm. So this is also duplicated, isn't it? Extracted. Make question controller. Yeah. And now we can move this here. And let's say return. Something like that. Yes. Looks better. And it should return a question view controller. All right. We don't need this question anymore. It's only used in here. And I don't like this hard coded Q1. So we can pass it here. Let's say question string. And it has a default value. And we can have this here now. Ah. Oh, it was it used here. there. Yeah. Okay, it is used. Okay, so this make SUT can start with options in here. Like that. And in here, we use our options like this. It's the type, it's a string. So let me call this Q. And it fails because we need to pass this type now. And it is Q1. There it is. Oh, good. Next test. Multiple. Much simpler now. So multiple answer. Multiple answer. Multiple answer. This should be true. This should be the same. And this should be the same. But now how can you tell that this is multiple or not? So we can add a boolean here to say if it is multiple or not or we can just pass the type instead of just a string so we can have a question instead and the default will be single answer single answer empty now i can go back to question here and this needs to be question let's do the same in here to make sure that we are using a single this is now a multiple Multiple answer. And I do this. And this one is also multiple answer. And this one is also multiple answer. Oh, yes. I want to make sure that the question of the view controller is Q1. And it fails, of course, because we are returning a fake one. So let's start here with the multiple answer. Yes. So okay. now we have failing tests. Let's make them pass. And we're going to have the same implementation, but this one is still going to fail. So we have a failing test still. The problem is that our factory now needs to load the view. Okay. In order to set the table view, right? You need to so instantiate it first. I need to create it and I need to start the view. Mm -hmm. And then I need to return to make the test pass. That means the factory is forcing the view to load. Now I can set the table view to true. And it passes. That's it. We can do some refactoring here, right? Create a private helper. Let's do this here. Let's have a private font question view controller for. And we can pass the options as well, because now we have it. And we return question view controller. Well, it doesn't matter. You have your control, right? Yes. Okay. And we can move. And here we just call return question the controller for question options answer callback. Oh, you need a comma after options. Thank you. And all good. We can have some line separation here. In the future, as we add more enum types. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to come here and edit. The compiler is going to help us. Since this lives in the implementation of the factory that lives in the main, that's fine. Cool. We don't break any module. Let's commit that. Let's commit that. Okay, so we are done with the question view controller creation. Now let's have a look at the results. Okay, we'll have the presentable answer. And the summary. But no one creates that yet. I don't want the factory creating those, otherwise it's too much responsibility for the factory. 
the factory should just create the result view controller with its dependencies. We have a presenter. We don't have it yet, but we can implement it now. Okay. We could also have just a protocol that we inject to the factory. And we'll continue the development of the results view controller in the factory. Yes. Mm -hmm. If we have a concrete one, we're going to have to stop our development and implement the presenter. And come back and finish it with the presenter. Or we could just create a protocol presenter that is injected here. Mm -hmm. And we can have a mocked one and carry on. Okay. They're both valid options with trade-offs. If we add a protocol here, we're going to have a level of interaction there that maybe is going to give her more flexibility. But again, since this factory lives in main and it's the concrete part, I don't see much benefit in making a protocol and adding this level of interaction. Right. And the benefits would be that we can carry on with the development of this and finish this factory. And all because this lives in main. If it was another layer, I would just personally create a, yes. an interface there, a protocol. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram here. And let's add our concrete factory. That's the iOS view controller factory. And it lives right here. Let me make some space here. So this is the main module. App Delegates is gonna start the game. So it's gonna live somewhere here. And this is the factory implementation. And that's what we have so far. So we need a presenter here. That will create the presentable answers. Yeah. And the presenter can be created by this factory as well. Or it can be injected with a protocol. And that's our dilemma here. Yeah. We could have a protocol presenter. Where would the protocol live? Outside here? And then the presenter needs to... Cross. Implement it? Cross yeah. boundary? No. Or the presenter concrete implementation should be here with the protocol and then they live in the same module. Why would you have a protocol that lives in the same module? It doesn't make it sense. It doesn't make sense. So I think it should be concrete. So that's why we're gonna stop a little bit the factory implementation and have our presenters. Let's do it. Let's do it in the next tomato. Mm -hmm.